Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Caroline Romero, a master's student at the University of Rio Grande do Sul. So Caroline, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Yeah. Uh, first, thank you for having me, Clay. Uh, I think it's, it's great to, to share a little about our studies with you guys and the listeners. So I am an animal science by the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, and now I am pursuing my master's in the last year, also at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Gotcha. So I read your study that you're doing there about the use of bioelectrical impedance analysis to measure the body composition of pigs. So I guess to start, that might be a new term for a lot of people. I know it was for me when I first read it. Um, so what is bioelectrical impedance analysis and how exactly does it work? Well, the bioelectrical impedance analysis is very common they use in the humans, as we know. And in other species too, like horses and whatever. But in pigs, we realize that uh, this use is not uh, very common. So the bioelectrical impedance analysis consists in apply uh, a little current, uh, electrical current in the body, like this current will pass through the tissues of the pigs. And we will measure the resistance with uh, this electrical current passed through the body. So we know that fat, uh, fat tissues uh, are more resistant to this current uh, electrical current. And we know that the muscles and other tissues like this are, have a lot of water and electrolytes in this composition. So the current will flow with more facility. So there's tissues. So the use is something like that. <laughs> gotcha. So what all did you guys, um, with this study, what all did you guys compare it with um, in terms of kind of looking at how successful this could be used? Yeah, well, we used 39 uh, pigs. This experiment uh, happened in Jabuticabal, Sao Paulo, at UNESP. And we used 39 pigs uh, and in the growth and finish phase. Né? Uh, and we applied these animals to the scan of DXA. And after that, we put these animals in prone position to, to, to do the, the bio analysis, the bioelectric impedance analysis that we call bio. Uh, then we put some electrodes and we have this body composition. So we work on these two values that DXA and BIA give to us. And we, we make a correlation to see how accurately the BIA was compared with DEXA. If in fact, we can use BIA to predict the body composition of pigs like DXA do. Gotcha. And so for those that aren't familiar, the DXA, um, could you give a little bit of background of what that is as well? Yeah, it's a machine, a big machine that we read like a uh, lean mass, uh, the body weight and some other tissues like bones and calcium, phosphorus in the composition of the pigs as well. It's, it's very common to use in humans too, but in pigs is, is very common. Gotcha. So when comparing the two, then I guess how, how similar was the, the BIA or the bioelectrical impedance analysis, BEA, um, or whatever it was exactly called, but how uh, similar was that analysis to this DXA then? I don't think they are pretty similar because the DXA, they, they do this analysis by the pixels that we have through this image after scan the, the pig. And the, the BIA, we have these electrodes, four electrodes that you, you, you place at the pig, two near the head and two near the, the back legs. And we don't, you don't, ooh, sorry, we don't need to have this animal sedated. In this experiment, we sedated the animal just because of the DXA. So the DXA is more, how can I say that? BIA is more easily to apply like in a farm lab, in a saw farm, uh, in this kind of uh, farms is, is very applicable. Gotcha. And so in terms of body composition, um, looking at, so I'm assuming you use this to kind of um, assess how they looked in terms of um, 
lean muscle percent and other factors or what what all factors were you able to kind of gather from this uh, BIA? With the BIA, we have an um, equation that was developed by Swantec in 1992. That's why also we are working on this because it's, you know, like an old equation. And with this equation, we can predict the fat-free mass. And after that, we can apply another equation to predict the protein. So now we are working, uh, we have like two studies at the same time, this one and another one that uh, we want to like uh, work on these equations from 1992 to like add more factors to make this uh, equation more precisely. Like in this equation uh, from Swantec, we use just the resistance reactants the body weight of the pig and the body length of the pig as well. And we think that more factors are important to predict this fat mass or the fat-free mass, uh, like sex. We know that male and females have some differences that females have more uh, lean mass than, than the boros. And then we think that if you add more factors like sex in this equation, we can make this equation more precisely. So we are working on that too. So one other question I had for you. Um, so with this technology, how do you see that it could best be applied um, to help the swine industry? Okay, uh, actually we have a lot of hope in this study because now we use mostly the ultrasound equipment to see this body composition of pigs. And we don't know, in fact, how accurately this is. Uh, the other point is the DXA equipment are not mobile, so he's fixed it. And it's hard uh, to you to have on the farm because we have a uh, high cost, like with the equipment, with the maintenance, and with the, um, this, uh, the injections to the animals because the animals need to be sedated. And of course, uh, a veterinary. And with the, the BIA, the Biological Impedance Analysis, he, uh, this equipment is literal like 12 for 12 in the mass moon. And we can go with this equipment wherever you, you go. So it's easy for you to go to a farm with this equipment and it's quickly to you to, to do this analysis because I think uh, when you use this equipment in, in piglets, we take like they are not sedated and we take less than two minutes for animal to do this reading. So he's very fast and very, how, how we, we see in this study, he's precisely. We have a correlation like 0 0.988 with the DXA. So he worked like the same with DXA and he's precisely. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Awesome. It sounds very promising. Um, well, I believe that's all we have time for. So thank you again, Caroline, for coming on the show. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.